All right, folks, Coinaholics of all ages, it is Saturday, February 4th, 2023. Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in for another Pocket Change Market Report brought to you by yours truly, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, So you guys are here for a reason. You want to know how much your change finds and your other finds are worth. Well, you've come to the right place. While... I'm not able to talk about every single coin that has sold in the last three days. How about the uh, the best? The best of the best. And uh, there's going to be plenty others. Of course, you guys can always check this out for yourself on eBay. But in any event, we have a pretty stacked lineup of coins to talk about. uh, Ranging from some of the earlier dated coins. All right. Which aren't too many of them. But... Believe you me, these are coins that you can cherry pick from a, uh, a competent coin dealer or at a coin show if you really wanted to. Um, but in addition, we got coins going all the way up to, guess what, 2023 that, that we are going to discuss. So if you enjoy hunting out those big lots of change or maybe you like coin roll hunting, then you've come to the right place. I will help you Get all the information you need to know about the market of some of the premier finds that folks have been coming across. A few kind of things to get out of the way before we jump in to the list for the week, or for this episode rather. Um, We don't talk about graded coins. Grading generally adds in an unneeded expense, sometimes as high as $60 in some cases. Uh, Which is something that if you could absolutely avoid then don't do it uh, because that's a cut into your bottom line. Um, And second of all, we're using just the good old regular images direct from the listing parties, uh, which means you're going to get the best and the worst images that you will find on every single coin sale. So this is going to determine what the the low bar is going to be and uh, some of the more overachieving photography you're going to get kind of like a wide range of that. And maybe you might even get a little photography lesson in the mix. All right. Exciting stuff. Let's see what we got here. Keep in mind that a lot of brand new 2023 coinage from Lincoln's to quarters are out in change right now. Look out for them and be one of the first ones to look for that amazing error because, uh, that's why we do this is to be uh, to to be kind of like the uh, at the forefront of uh, of all the big coin news uh, every single year. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Thank you guys again. How about a four coin lot of Roosevelt dimes, all exhibiting some sort of rim clip on there? Uh, sizes are all differing, but aside from that, after checking each and every single one, they all look legit, uh, and they're early enough of dates that they're quite interesting. Um, and I usually tell folks, if you can, try and look out for reasonably priced uh, lots. Um, anything more than two coins uh, represents bulk to me. Um, so if you find one that's three coin lot, four coin lot, oftentimes when people are selling it in lots, they're willing to accept a much less dollar amount per piece by selling it as a lot. But it allows them to get rid of all the coins in one shot. So you can um, swoop right in, buy the lot up, and then part them out. Either add to your collection or resell them on the secondary market as singular items and make more money. The idea is we want to recognize the opportunity to double our money. And uh, this one right here, believe it or not, I think there is some room right here to get pretty close to doubling up your money. But keep in mind if you're going to resell these as singular coins in the marketplace... Prepare for these to sit around for a little bit, uh, especially uh, some of the later dated ones like the 96D that you see on the top right of your screen. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably hang around. You put these up for, you know, like $9.99 shipped um, and you're going to be really close to doubling up your uh, your money here. Uh, so pretty cool. This one ended up selling for $18.51 shipped with 22 bids. Again, another great way to kick off this episode of the PCMR. Uh, the next one that we have here, actually from the same seller. This one's really cool. 1967 Roosevelt Dime. Uh, this time this coin has uh, what appears to be three rim clips. Uh, one pretty good size one over the word Liberty. 
and then two much more shallower versions. Uh, you know, it, it's the the way the shallower clips are positioned on the rim right there. Uh, you'd figure it'd just be one extra clip and then some Blakesley effect. Um, so sometimes it, you know that could fool most folks into thinking that it's a three X clip on there. Uh, coin is in great shape. If someone's looking for something like this for their date set of this particular error, then look no further. This one sold, this one singular coin sold for $17.48 with 13 bids. All right, be on the lookout for this one. Uh, I didn't know this one existed, or if I did cover it, it was a long time ago, but it's on a 2020 Denver Lincoln Shield cent. So this is an error that we generally see on Philadelphia minted coins. Going back for about five, six years, uh, they are a surprising find, to say the least. But this one right here has some die clashing on a Denver out of all coins. So another great one to be on the lookout for. While not the most uh, uh, powerful or strongest clashing that I've seen on the Lincoln um, there's no denying that a Denver minted example of this error is, um, is something quite scarce. Uh, this one right here ended up selling for $11.99. If you could possibly go through rolls of these, which there are plenty of them on the secondary market of Denver minted 2020s, and you find, you know, you find a nice little honey hole of them, uh, you could sell them for, you know, make 10 bucks per coin. I'd say that's a pretty good win all day long. All right, and uh, here's one I don't see come across too often. Uh, this time a 2001P North Carolina Statehood Quarter. This is a state that I don't see pop up on the market, except maybe, I don't know, two, three times a year uh, as an off-center struck. And uh, th these are widely collected by state and mint mark. Um, so there are dedicated collectors that are looking to assemble a full 50 state set along with its territories, with some sort of off-center strike. Um, the later on you go in the series, the, the much more difficult it's going to be to find that. Uh, with that being said, this coin is in great shape, and it did sell for $25 here in the last day. And by the way, all the listings are for, from about the last 18 to 24 hours. It's a pretty tight window there. Uh, the next one that we have here, this is something that we don't see pop up too often. We generally see this... Uh, anomaly on uh, business strike coins. So what we have here is a 2007 S James Madison presidential dollar proof that was waffle canceled by the mint. So there was obviously something wrong with this uh, coin, um, you know, in order for it to be sent off for destruction. Um, you know, maybe uh, the overall planchet quality wasn't good after the strike uh, because proof coins are generally um, QC to death, uh, as in, you know, there are mint employees that actually look at these very closely. Uh, so one, when one doesn't quite pass the visual eye test, they send them off for, uh, for destruction. Now, uh, there was a period of time up to, I believe, the pandemic period where you're able to walk um, into a mint facility, you know, during one of those tours. And I think, what, the Philadelphia Mint had tours all the way up to what 2000 early 2020 um they might have reinstated by now i haven't exactly kept up on that news but um their mint store used to sell things like this as a novelty so uh that's where a lot of these waffled coins come from uh they actually have a machine that that does this cool little patterning on it um but ultimately these are damaged uh canceled out coins um, that had some sort of um, uh, production error on them. Uh, so this one right here, uh, again, it is a proof that's something we don't see every day. This one did sell for forty three dollars and ninety eight cents. Uh, you always have to add in a waffle cancel coin to your collection if you're really deep in the hobby. Um, it just as kind of a novelty. Uh, they're not wildly expensive. Uh, some of the larger denominations can be a little bit hairy on the secondary market, but generally these are very affordable. Uh, the next one that we have here, uh, TLC Varieties had a, another phenomenal high grade specimen of a 1972 Lincoln DDO number three, also the FS103 Cherry Picker's Guide variety. Uh, as you can see, beautiful coin, uh, even imaged in this two by two holder. 
uh, will feature your best doubling on the motto and Liberty, and then a little bit of doubling on the date as well, although it's not not the strongest uh, DDO of the uh, of this particular date. This is one that is worth looking for. Uh, the, the motto has a really nice spread on it. Uh, so this one right here sold for $43.90. And um, the 103 has traditionally been referred to as kind of like one of the more bottom end DDOs for the date. Uh, you could probably make the argument that the FS109 is up there as well as far as desirability goes. Um, and that's why these in this kind of condition are worth the amount of money that they are. It's it's not like it's a 107 or a 102 uh, where high graded pieces sell in the hundreds of dollars ungraded so um beautiful example if you're looking for this particular date and ddo uh this is the way to go he has uh, plenty more where these came from so here's our uh our first notable i, I guess or only notable 2023 on the list and um, there's been a number of these have popped up on the marketplace at first there were a couple of them that sold for like four five six hundred dollars and they were like outrageous i, I mean um, uh, the person that was selling them uh, didn't really quite know exactly what the anomaly is, but they do look like something. Uh, here's another one of those examples. I don't think it's from that particular seller, uh, but there's been some interesting things being found on the Denver struck Bessie Coleman's. This is something to keep an eye out for. Apparently, um, there are situational strike throughs and little die chips that, are, that can be found on the Denver's. Um, there are die chips you can find on the Philadelphia's, but nothing quite like this. Um, so this is a perfectly placed little small strike through right in front of the plane where it looks like a propeller. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, that same strike through anywhere else on the coin wouldn't get as much love as this one does because of where it's positioned on the coin. Uh, so with that being said, this one had a few bidders at $24 at 75 cents was the final sale price with seven total bids. Look out for these. If you're on the West Coast, this is a pretty good opportunity to take advantage of this. Uh, I have a feeling that after you know a few months after this has gotten out there as being a very common anomaly to be found on these quarters, the price is going to plummet. You know, same way with the, the drooling die chip that was found um, at first on the Maya Angelus. Uh, it seems to be that every single one of them uh, suffered from that uh, particular error. Um, so pretty cool, pretty neat for now. Uh, it's always good to find one of these in high grade. And believe it or not, this was at one point a Cherry Picker's Guide variety. I think it's since been delisted, but it still owns its catalog number. Uh, but it's the 1969D Lincoln Memorial Scent with the floating roof, number one, but the Cherry Picker's Guide variety is the myth missing initials of Frank Gasparro on the reverse. So the FG initials on the bottom right corner of that monument looks to have been over braided or polished away. Um, and that's generally how you get the, uh, the weakness and overall disappearance of some of the devices on the reverse. And um, they call it the floating roof because the two accent lines on both the left and right side have been over polished. So it just looks like this secondary roof that's floating in the air. It's actually a really neat um, look to it. Uh, equally more impressive when they're on mint state BU red coins like this one. Uh, so with that being said, this one shocked the crap out of me with a sale of $55.45. Again, we don't see these high grade specimens pop up in the market too often. We see a lot of lower grade stuff and even those are commanding like five to $7.00. Uh, today. Uh, so again, this is another kind of like fringe interest type of coins that a number of collectors do like. All right, as a uh, complete contrast, here's a big variety on a rather beat up 1939 Jefferson nickel. Uh, so the first thing you're going to notice, other than the washed out photography, are going to be the sizable rim bumps on the obverse of the coin. Uh, which is damage. This is, um, in all for all intents and purposes, a damaged coin. If you were going to send this off for grading, um, PCGS, NGC, and Annex will notate damage on the holder. Um, but this is, ladies and gentlemen, the FS801, if I'm not mistaken, DDR, the doubled Monticello. Uh, even with the less than desirable photos, you can see the 
unmistakable doubling, especially on the last O in Monticello with a double loop right there. Um, great looking coin. Uh, you know, even with its warts, this one still managed to bring in $39. So just because something is ugly and, uh, you know, maybe undesirable because of its, uh, uh, its issues, don't think it won't sell for a lot of money. Uh, when you kind of, um, uh, dangle a carrot in someone's face, it doesn't matter how, how, or what it looks like. Um, there will be people that will bite on these. Uh, again, one of my favorite dates to look out for because a lot of them that you do find at like coin shops and shows uh, raw are going to be like mid-state type of grades. Um, and this is always a great variety to be on the lookout for. There's actually an over mid mark and an RPM. Uh, but the 38D over D RPM that you see here is, uh, is a favorite of mine. I probably own a good 30 or 40 of this specimen in varying grades. I do have mid-state versions of this coin. Uh, the one that I don't have too many of are the uh, the D over S over mid marks, uh, which are very nice. I got maybe two or three of those. Um, but be on the lookout. There are a few really nice RPMs, uh, one of them in which I believe is recognized in the Cherry Picker's Guide. So this one right here sold for $40 with nine bids. Very good looking coin. Always great when you can find these on a mid-state 38D. Uh, and here's one that we haven't talked about in quite some time. And um, uh, you got to appreciate the way that this was described by its seller. 1987 Lincoln Memorial said where they said that the motto was actually um, struck into the rim. And it, it kind of looks like that, guys. Uh, so you have this this ring on the inner, inner side or right inside the rim, uh, especially going at the top right there of this coin. And what they call that is called ridge ring, which is a type of dye deterioration, uh, most commonly seen on this composition of coin. Um, and we generally see them on, um, on Lincolns uh, from the 80s and 90s. So it's a very common occurrence there. Uh, but that is what they call ridge ring. It's a type of dye deterioration. Uh, it's not, in a sense, a variety. It might come up as an error attribution sometime in the future, but as of now, they call this damage, but still a neat looking anomaly. Nonetheless, this one sold for $9 and 50 cents with eight bids. Keep in mind, this is something that you could find, uh, quite often. If, if you're an avid change searcher or roll hunter, these come up quite a bit, but this is a particularly strong example of a ridge ring. Uh, so here's another good one to be on the lookout for. I forgot about this one, but every time one of these pops up, you know, it, it does command a fair amount of cash. Um, it's a 2022 Philly, uh, Nino Otero Warren quarter that the long forgotten quarter, because, uh, you know, after the Wilma man killer, um, there wasn't a ton of stuff to be on the lookout for, but this is good old wart nose Washington on this one. Uh, pretty sizable die chip here, uh, makes all the difference in the world as, as a matter of fact, um, any of the die chips, uh, that are not the corner of mouth drooling die chip are actually solid sellers today. Um, so like the one here that you see on the tip of the nose has been a very, very good selling coin. This one ended up selling for $15.24. I also want to add that this coin has seen quite a bit of circulation wear. Uh, Telstar Coins had quite a few really nice pieces. Now, the likelihood that you'll find these in change is pretty slim, if not impossible. However, you have to realize that these coins uh, come up at coin shops and shows very often. And oftentimes, a lot of coin shops don't care too much about mint errors. So they're going to price them to get rid of them. And uh, I've come across a lot of dealers that are like, wow, you're really asking $7 for that off-center struck Lincoln uh, or $10 for a broad struck Washington quarter. And I snap those up pretty quickly because I realized that they could sell for two to three X what a dealer is, um, you know, going to try and get for them. Uh, so this one right here is off center by about 70%, give or take. Um, and then this one ended up selling for $23 and 88 cents. And by the way, all the Telstar coins are in really nice high grades. Uh, like this 99P right here, which is off center by about 15%. Another great looking example, although a very common date 
for this error type. Sold for $22.38. Uh, here's a 97P, a little bit tougher, but I also wanted to add, boy, those steps on the reverse are sharply struck. Uh, very, very good looking, very well done piece right here. Uh, very clean. Uh, not one that you see come up too often. Uh, the seller or Telstar mentioned that this one is a 91, but it looks more like a 97. So, um, you know, I don't think that's going to make the coin more valuable as a result. Uh, this one did sell for $22.38 as well. Uh, he also had a 1999P Roosevelt Dime, which is off center by about 15 20%. Again, another good looking coin. This one, $22.38. That seems to be the uh, uh, kind of like the one day sale price, $22.38 shipped on any off center struck coin you could find on Telstar's website or their eBay store. So not from Telstar, this one came across the auction block and we have to talk about it. Um, again, probably nothing that you will come across casually, you know, just going through uh, paper money. Uh, but how about this 1995 early small head $10 Fed Reserve note with a uh, pretty neat, uh, what do they call that, butterfly fold error, um, where the corner of the sheet had a fold in it and it's accordion fold, um, as you can see. Uh, this is the note with the uh, the fold, um, uh, unfolded, rather. And it's a good-looking note. This thing was probably found out of a, um, a, a strap, a brand-new BEP strap, uh, because there is nary a fold or any circulation wear on this. And besides, this would be one that would be hard to find in circulation anyways. The moment a bank grabs a hold of this thing and um, rips open the BEP seal and, you know, puts it through their counting machine... Man, this thing's going to get all tore up like they normally do. So this one sold for a whopping $372.72. Um, some of you are going to ask, well, would it make a difference to buy something like this and grade it? Actually, it might. It might actually do that. That might even, you know, get this one up to like maybe $600 in value by the time you send it off to uh, PCGS Banknote or PMG. Um, because it's that massive of an error and, um, any sort of like folding cutting error of this magnitude, um, is scooped up pretty quickly and at a very high inflated market rate, um, that is uh, suitable for, for what these have been going for. So keep that in mind. You're sure you're going to pay three, $400 for something like this, but if you um, consider sending this out to a grading company, you got to think about the long term, you know, kind of like the waiting game and, and uh, you know, that kind of play. And you're going to do really well. Uh, so we have a uh, very good looking, what is this, 2001 Denver Lincoln Memorial Cent off center by about 50, 55%. Um, the seller had mentioned that it, it has a double the date or it's double struck, but what really is happening here is this is a copper coated zincan, so it's got a very very precarious, very thin copper plating on it. So when you have like a broad strike or an off center strike on this particular composition, what it does is it stretches out the copper plating on there and it provides cracks, so it gives it the appearance of doubling. Um, so very good looking coin. This is a date that you just don't see come up uh, too often. I'm glad we're seeing it here for the first time. And because of that, we have a $48.88 sale, which is uh, unprecedented for a later date and this composition. It, it's like people don't want to invest a ton of money in this particular error on a copper coated zinc, but someone went all out for this one. Uh, Telstar also had a 64, uh, really cool, uh, date you don't see come up too often, off center by about 20%, and this one sold for $31.88, I'd say I'd buy this one all day long compared to the previous coin. And, uh, Telstar also had a 99, uh, this one is a dual error, so it's a broad strike, which means there is no collar in place during the striking process, it makes the coin a lot bigger because that metal flow goes outwards. And it's also got a pretty sweet die clash. You can see the prisoner scent details on there. Um, you gotta love it. I, I mean, this thing is a, uh, a gem to look at. And um, it's going to provide uh, its owner many years of viewing pleasure. This thing is awesome. 
Uh, there's a little comparison with just a regular Lincoln. It is definitely a lot larger than that, if not as big as a uh, Jefferson Nickel at this point. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one ended up selling for $43.88. What a wild, wild sale. Very good. All right. Talk about rip of the show. This is 17, 90% silver Roosevelt dimes, all with a rim clip. Every single one of them. Every single one. And they all look pretty good. There's nothing that's like, ooh, that thing's a beater. This is a really good auction pickup. Um, again, we're looking for bulk here. You're going to be taking buying something like this and reselling it on singular uh, uh, type of listings. Uh, so this one right here ended up selling for $68.95. And what you're going to do, because these are all silver, these are going to come up less frequently in the marketplace. Number two, we have a lot of different dates here. Okay, they're not all like, say, 1964. So I'd see duplicates in there, but we're not talking about all of one date. Um, this is really neat. You could take this lot and you could you could list them for $11.99 shipped for each one or $9.99 for the 64s. But by the time that you're done selling all these and you're kind of collecting all the money and counting it, you would have made nearly 3x your money by selling this lot all individually. So someone really wanted this one gone. I mean, shoot, by the way, by the final sale price on this one, you'd figure they're selling this for damn near melt at this point. But that's going to be a huge, huge winning opportunity for someone that wants to put in some work, list these individually, and then go to town. You know, collect the money, enjoy it. Uh, so how about the Delaware Quarter, our long lost forgotten Delaware Quarter that came out 23 years ago to the day. I, I think it was about, what, not 23, 24 years ago to the day when the Delaware Statehood Quarter first came out. I believe it was like end of January, beginning of February of 1999 with this thing. Oh my goodness. This thing, this series had kicked off and revolutionized the whole excitement level of coin collecting unlike any other because this is what people were finding in pocket change at that particular date. I remember it like it was yesterday. And then you had the TV hucksters that were selling these by the set for like 25 bucks a pop. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. And people were buying them, you know? Uh, so, yeah, this is the uh, aforementioned Spitting Horse, which is actually a precursor to a die crack. Um, this one has the complete um, spike that goes through the horse's head and then out the other side here. Some would say that it's a, a die dent, uh, which it could be, uh, or a die crack or a gouge or something to that effect, but this one will actually end up as a crack that goes through Caesar Rodney and then to the rim on the much more later progression models. Uh, so this one, Great coin, sold for $13.95, uh, and the coin is in really decent shape as well. So again, this is right up there with the um, In God We Rust Kansas Quarter, with the Fifth Claw Alaska State Quarter. This is a very kind of like well-collected type of uh, anomaly, uh, all with their own unique nickname. And that's why even today, 20 plus years later, these have uh, still have a following. A uh, couple cuds here. How about a 1983 Lincoln cent? This is a small one there at the base of Lincoln's bust. Uh, nothing too crazy. Looks like it came right out of change. It does have just a hint of weakness on the reverse in that same area where the cut is. So it's a die break. Piece of the die had fallen off. So when it strikes coins, it's going to leave that empty anomaly right there as a raised bubble. This one sold for $23.88 with seven bids. And we also have this uh, well-loved 1979. We've seen this one before. Very common, very common uh, uh, cut. I would say this is probably like an R1 in, on the rarity scale, uh, which means they are very available. They probably made, I don't know, uh, 10,000 of these or so, maybe less than that. Uh, but these always come up in auction. This one right here in this condition sold for $25.04. Cuds are kings, regardless of condition. Uh, we have a few more to kind of kick and end things off for the uh, for the weekend, so that way you guys can go and uh, do some cherry picking. 
Uh, how about this 1981 $10 bill with a completely misaligned, um, uh, what I call part two of the third print, uh, which is all of the black ink on that overprint that's been misaligned down and to the right a little bit. Uh, crazy error. Uh, you can see this thing coming a mile away. Looks like it's uh, the notes in fantastic shape. There is a centerfold in there. Um, no, I'm not talking about Playboy centerfold, but an actual fold right down the middle of the note. This one sold for two sixty nine and thirty nine cents with forty three bids. Uh, and then the king of eBay Civil War token sales, Mister Steve Hayden had probably one of the coolest looking Civil War token errors, bar none, that I've seen across the auction block. Uh, this is a, uh, a New York Civil War store card. It's got a one cent face value, uh, although it says not one cent, which is common during that day. They didn't want to copy what the U.S. Mint or the government was doing with their coins that were commonly being hoarded, by the way, and that's why Civil War tokens existed during that era. Uh, but check out all of the die breaks on the obverse there of the coin, in addition to all of the die clashing. You can even see a partial clash date right here on the reverse at the 12 o'clock position. But how neat is this one? Uh, is it just me or was this a bargain? It sold for $106.25 with 25 bits. I kind of feel like this one probably... Could have gone for like two, three, four hundred dollars, and it's got that pretty cool blue toning on as well. And then finally, Bubba Sully's, the last coin on the list, uh, also had a really exceptional uh, off center struck early dated Jefferson nickel from like two weeks ago. I don't know if this is the same coin, but boy, this is a rarity. We don't see anything generally pre 1960 come up on the market too often. Uh, but this one's off center by about 15-20%. Uh, it does have a scratch on the reverse, uh, but it's a 54S, very tough date. If you're looking for this as uh, part of your date set of off center strikes, good luck. Uh, this might be the only one you see in a calendar year. Um, Bubba ended up selling this one for $120.25 with 31 bids. Absolutely exceptional piece to end off the PCMR for this week and weekend uh, because we have another one coming up on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that one. But that's going to go ahead and do it. Go out there, guys. Get some hunting done. Uh, pick up some coins. Check out a coin show or shop. I believe Long Beach sale is still going right now this week. So, yeah, you have no excuses. Go out there. Go to the banks and uh, do your thing. And report back to me. If you find anything neat from this weekend, that's it. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my videos and channel if you haven't done so. Come check me out on TikTok at Blue Ridge Silverhound if you like the shorter videos. But that's going to wrap it up, ladies and gents. Happy hunting, and I will see you on the next coin video. So long.